Hey guys, Creep the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk about an issue that I had recently, how I went about troubleshooting it and uh, what the conclusion was and what I need to do about it uh, going forward. And it's just like an example of all the weird stuff that can happen to us as photographers. We have so many single points of failure in our systems and every single piece of equipment really that we have is um, a failure waiting to happen. Uh, because yeah, if the mount fails, everything's gone. If the autofocus fails, everything's gone. If the filter wheel fails, everything's gone. If the camera fails, everything's gone. And we don't have any redundancy for anything basically besides uh, going back to manual stuff. So let's go into what the issue was. So a few, a few nights ago, we had some nice weather, although recently we've, uh, we haven't really had great weather. Today is the first um, not too bad day in, a, in maybe a week. Um, and I was taking pictures of the Orion Nebula and of the Horsehead Nebula because, you know, why not? It's, it's always fun. And um, I had planned to take narrowband images of that. So I was using this setup here with my 1600mm uh, um, cool camera along with my narrowband filters from Astrodon in this uh, ZW uh, electronic filter wheel, EFW, and, you know, my Newton telescope. And uh, I had planned in a single night to have uh, first like H-alpha and oxygen-3 and then second night maybe oxygen-3 and sulfur-2 and try to mix everything together in the end. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's basically you take a monochrome camera, you have um, filters of a specific color uh, that let only one part of the light come through and you will rotate the filters one after the other taking exposures then. And I noticed that I had my all of my H alpha um, images at one time and then all of my oxygen three images at the other t at, uh, at after that so um, I launched it everything looked okay H alpha was uh, was gathering uh, images away um, the only problem was the wind the wind was really strong and it was basically botching every single one of my exposures which was a bit annoying the wind is pretty strong today as well oh wow good timing yeah it's pretty hot and strong today as well and <laughs> what is happening <laughs> yeah so the wind is pretty strong it was a bit like that everything was wrong uh, but you know i still expected to still be able to get something out of it and the day after i checked my uh, images and i noticed that uh, my h alpha uh, pictures were perfectly fine and i was taking longer exposures than usual usually at f4 with my usual gain of 200 and my offset of 50 on this camera i take exposures of 300 seconds for h alpha and 180 seconds for o3 i had decided to try to go a bit deeper uh, see if it would change anything to be like 480 seconds on h alpha and 300 seconds on O3, which is something that I had attempted in the past and had worked fine. But anyway, the day after, I look at my subs, all of my H-alpha subs are ruined by the wind, but they are there, right? We have actual data and all of my uh, Oxygen 3 subs are completely white out. Like the whole image is white. There is like all of the pixels have the, the highest value possible for the pixel. It's all white, overexposed, nothing can be gotten out of that. And that was the issue that I saw. So pause the video now, think about what could be the causes for that and what you would do to investigate uh, that and you know, what would be your process and what do you think the actual issue was for me. So uh, now that uh, you have thought about it, let's see uh, what I thought. So I first thought like, um, Okay, uh, maybe my 300 second exposure for Oxygen 3 was actually too long, um, but I was pretty sure I had done it with this scope in the past. So I searched for my old uh, subframes and I did find one target where I had, that was even lower on the horizon than Orion. Um, and it was during a full moon that I had taken that target that had 300 second exposures, Oxygen 3. And yeah, there was no problem, same camera. Okay, so, First thing, it's not the exposure time. Second thing, is it the camera gain and offset? So I checked the camera gain and offset settings in Nina. I checked them in the camera tab. I checked them in the sequence tab. And they were both my usual values of, uh, for narrowband of gain 200 and offset 50. Okay, so what else is left? Um, 
I know it's not the camera, I guess, because the camera worked fine for H alpha. And, um, and I was like, okay, maybe uh, the, uh, the mount basically had issues in the middle of the night, maybe, you know, Meridian flip didn't go well and it started uh, imaging in the exact wrong part of the sky. Uh, maybe, it, I'm not sure what it had done, but maybe it could have gone towards a building and Im imaged the building for the whole night. Uh, that's unlikely with my mount limits. And, or maybe, you know, um, uh, the plate solving after the, uh, the emergent flip had failed multiple times with the recovery every 10 minutes and it had just exhausted the night and by the time it, uh, Oxygen 3 had uh, managed to uh, start exposures, we were uh, with the dawn already. Uh, I checked the timing of my frames, I checked everything, it was definitely neither of those options. So I was confused and I was like, meh. Uh, so I, I, um, I double checked the filter wheel itself. So I removed the camera, looked inside the filter wheel, and I saw that the filter that was selected was actually not my Oxygen 3 filter, but was my luminance filter. I'm like, that's weird, because I, it is possible for it to go back to luminance if, for example, the computer restarts um, or a USB is plugged back out and back in, then the filter wheel is, will rotate very often and go back to the position one filter, which for me is luminance. Um, and luminance would explain everything. Uh, it would s explain why, you know, I got uh, white out exposures because if I try to take a 300 second exposure at gain 200 uh, from here in Tokyo, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get a white out image. And so my thought was, okay, maybe uh, the filter wheel basically disconnected and, and basically reconnected during the night. We had a micro disconnection and re reinitialized itself and that's why we're back on position one filter. Okay, well, I wasted a night, but uh, no big deal. So, okay, I went for another night and uh, what happened with the other night is I had oxygen three and then sulfur two and oxygen three was perfectly fine and then sulfur 2 was uh, overexposed. Same symptoms as before, full white out. Uh, again, I checked uh, the filter set in the filter wheel and I saw that the filter was back to luminance again. And I had changed my USB cable just in case. So I was like not sure. Uh, I thought like maybe it's a problem with the USB hub of my camera. Um, uh, because I had uh, I had changed basically the camera port, which then is the USB hub for the filter wheel, and I was kind of afraid of that. But so I started to I removed the filter wheel, I tested it with the computer, I made it move around, and then I saw that uh, it would select the wrong filter, and that's not good. Uh, so usually it would just go to the right filter. It could rotate throughout the whole filters without any issues as many times as needed. And uh, it's just uh, sometimes when selecting a filter, it would go past that filter, stop at, stop at the next filter, sometimes stay there on the wrong filter, sometimes hesitate and then go back to the correct filter. And uh, yeah, so I tried several things. I tried removing the, the filter carousel and, um, and, and, you know, cleaning it and cleaning the, uh, the magnetic, the whole sensor uh, that basically de detects which filter we are currently at. Um, and it did not uh, help at all. Um, the wheel was still like going badly. And I tried uh, the center screw of the wheel, the tightness of the center screw. I tightened it up a, a tiny bit and the problem was still there. Um, I, tiny, ty, uh, I did it a bit more and the product problem seemed to disappear. I tried it one more night, got the same issue, determined that the problem had not disappeared. So yeah, uh, then I tried and one of the first things I had tried was the software method which is recalibrating the filter wheel and I got a message that the filter wheel was not able to rotate properly which is absolutely was able to rotate properly. I tried to move the, the motor uh, a little bit so there was a bit less friction between the wheel and the actual uh, motor shaft, but that was not it either. Um, it w it's just my filter wheel here is broken. I cannot use it reliably anymore. 
So my setup here, my narrowband setup, my monochrome setup is out of commission, which is why I need to use uh, my color camera, which I have on this uh, little tiny telescope here. And as you can see here, it's very low on the ground. This is because it can take advantage of the balcony walls to be protected against the winds. Uh, I actually have holes in the, the balcony walls back there. I'm not sure why those are here. I bought this uh, house used, so it's not like I had it built. Um, so I'll need to cover those holes and I might also add a cover up to the level of, um, uh, of the tessaku. Uh, I don't know how to say that in English anymore, of the um, metal barrier, whatever we call it. So with that, I should have less wind at this level and uh, we might be able to get better images and so I'm accomplishing that with my carbon fiber uh, Citron Japan uh, tripod and the mount, I don't know, it, it, it feels like it, it looks so ridiculously cute like that and I absolutely love it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's one other thing that I am doing right now. So this setup is basically out of commission and so I just want to try using this uh, um, telescope a bit more. So anyway, that was uh, my recent issue and this kind of stuff can happen all the time at any time. It can be very annoying and, uh, and honestly, like I was kind of in a slump in the first place. Uh, so when that happened, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this hobby. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not doing this anymore. This is too painful. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite at that phase anymore, but uh, you know, I'm still thinking about just like selling my bazooka there and just doing everything with this because I'm tired of all that stuff. I think I'll end up buying an, an EFW Mini uh, to host only my narrowband filters and use them with my 1600 uh, mm cool. But it's, it's so frustrating and it happens and uh, we shouldn't abandon, uh, it will get better. It's just, it's, um, it's so frustrating when this happens because there's just so many things that can go wrong with this hobby. And uh, yeah, that's the way things are. We are all fighters, we're, we're all warriors. And you who are watching, you are the same. You have overcome a lot of issues and congrats on doing so. And you'll have more issues in the future and you will overcome them. And that's pretty much the message that I want to send today. So with that, Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to click on that like button. Leave a comment down below. If you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you like astrophotography, astronomy, tips and tricks about all those hobbies and you are a geek at heart, and if you're still watching, you are a geek at heart, you absolutely should click on that subscribe button down there to be aware when I uh, publish a new video. And again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.